moneyanswers.com. I was doing it from memory. Moneyanswers.com. Okay. And that is run by the great Jordan Goodman, who joins us on the phone now. Hey, Jordan. Hey, Jordan. Great to be with you guys again. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, man. It's great to have you. Can uh, I ask him a question? Just, just sure. doesn't involve what you were talking about. Uh-huh. Uh, with the possibility of not raising the debt ceiling in December, is my uh, fortune, well, it's not a fortune, that I've accumulated over the last 42 years going to be wiped out? Yes, it would be. Oh, thank yes, you. It would be. That's not what I wanted. <laughs> no, if we default on national debt, if we actually go ahead and do it, the markets would crash, the yeah. economy would go into recession, there would be a worldwide, uh, we've never seen it before, and we've gotten close. But, uh, yes, this would be a complete and total disaster and completely unnecessary, self-inflicted wound, as I would put it. All right. Well, that's, that puts us in a great mood. You're like sunshine on yeah. my shoulders. <laughs> okay, Lou. That's one of the reasons why Bitcoin's done so well, actually, uh-huh. is the fear of defaulting the national debt. People are losing faith in the U.S. dollar because of all these games. And they're good. The, the traditional place people would go is gold. And that hasn't done much for a long time. It's about $1,800 an ounce. It hasn't really changed much. But Bitcoin has surged about $60,000 per Bitcoin. And I think what you just talked about is one reason why that's happening. So Jordan's joining us. I texted him yesterday. I walked into the Danbury 7-Eleven of all places. 7-Eleven. And I saw a Bitcoin machine and I said, holy cow, man, (laughs) this is different. This is weird. Uh, So I texted Jordan because, of course, I have nothing but questions. I have no answers. Let's start with the machine itself, if we can. Do you know about these what can i physically what kind of transactions could i do at a at a bitcoin kiosk well you would load a wallet with bitcoin and one bitcoin is sixty thousand dollars but you can get it in much smaller denomination i know you normally like to get them one at a time but for most people they would actually get them in smaller pieces um and then you could load a wallet and you can start doing transactions in bitcoin these days uh you can buy things on ebay and do PayPal transactions, and uh, there's just all kinds of things that's going to be becoming more and more common that you can actually buy and sell things in Bitcoin. So I'm actually buying Bitcoin as a cur- – like I go there and say I put in my, my debit card or cash. It will let me purchase Bitcoin. Right there. Well, think of it as like an ATM, right? right, where you have a debit card, and you can move things around, and you can download cash. You just don't, don't – you cannot download a physical – Bitcoin that you can hold in your hand. It just doesn't work that way. But it's an electronic one, and you would have an electronic wallet, and you would put in cash or uh, do a transfer from your checking account, and the out comes Bitcoins onto your electronic wallet. And then you can spend it wherever they'll accept it. So it's like non-fungible, you know? Right. And that's the, the, the other thing is called NFTs, non-fungible tokens, <laughs> which is a really hot area. I think there should be an Ethan and Lou NFT, actually, because it would soar in value dramatically. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll make that happen. <laughs> we could do that. We could show... I'm mean, a picture it's, of the two of you on it. It's, yeah? it, it's conceptual. You, you, know what NF, you know what NFTs are, right? Yeah, non-fungible tokens. They're, it's conceptual commodities. Like, uh, we could say, like, Ethan and Lou... The uh, the the saying Florida you say we say that on our show uh-huh. all the time. We could put, right. put that up for sale, and someone would. It would be worth at least a million dollars, at least. Yeah. So it would not be worth. A million dollars. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so I'm I'm still confused. You, you said is sixty thousand dollars. That's one per Bitcoin. Okay. One is there, is there a uh, is that the lowest you can go if you uh, want to go to the ATM, Bitcoin ATM? No, I- I'm saying you can buy it in much smaller pieces. Okay, that's what I, that $20. I just wanted to be clear. You know, it, it, but I'm just saying if you bought one actual Bitcoin, it's about $60,000. But no, people do transactions in small slices of Bitcoin all the time. Now, what I really wanted to get from you is what well, I saw this at the Danbury 7-Eleven. It's got to mean that they're every, they're starting to pop up everywhere. Is, is this sustainable? Like, is this the future of what we will see in America? This is the present and okay. the future. Okay. Yes, this is popping up all over the place. People want to do transactions in Bitcoin. One country. All right, this is a little quiz for you guys. Which country has taken Bitcoin as their main currency? Russia. Uh, I'll say uh, Japan. El Salvador. El Salvador. El Salvador. I never wow. would have guessed that. Wow. Their currency was worthless anyway, so they went to Bitcoin. In other places where the currency becomes worthless, 
Instead of gold, people go to Bitcoin. Venezuela is another example. Okay, when you're trying to get out of Venezuela, you don't take uh, whatever the boulevards, whatever they have there, you take Bitcoin. It's a store of value. And that's the way things are going around the world. Um, and a lot of major retailers are now starting to take Bitcoin. And all the major uh, banks and Wall Street trading houses are all trading millions of dollars in Bitcoin every day. Jordan Goodman joins the show from MoneyAnswers.com. What is the future of, of cash? I love cash. <laughs> Are we going to be you able? You do. You're, you're so anach- your anachronism. Jo- yes. Jordan, jo- Jordan, listen to me. His wife won't let him have a credit card <laughs> or well, any kind I, of an You can get a Bitcoin wallet then, and you'll beat her to it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but oh, she'll hate will that. We have, will we find ourselves, you know, say 10, 15, 20 years? I go into a, say a store like the Seven Eleven, and my cash won't be something that I can use to make a purchase. Are we headed that way? It's possible. That's that. I mean, already when you go on the airlines today, I just was on a flight yesterday, they will not take cash. They just do not. They'll only take debit and credit cards. In the future, they'll take Bitcoin. Yankee Stadium doesn't that, take cash anymore either. That's right. You take so something. You're becoming a cashless society those, no matter what your wife has. Those cards are, you know, those debit and credit cards, Lou. It's something new. You ought to get on board. <laughs> <laughs> something that I've been complaining about recently on the show is. That we, you know, our guys are kind of like our show. They kind of reflect us. They know it. They're know-it-alls. They know everything, right? And a lot I've been getting lately is people giving me financial advice and saying they're making this amount of money and that amount of money in the stock market and on things like Bitcoin. Uh, Couldn't there be this many success stories right now out there? Yes. Yes, because, I mean, the Bitcoin market, Bitcoin hit a peak of about 65000 back in April, and then it plunged to about 30000 and now it's about 60000 So anybody who got in at 30000 or they're about, again, you don't have to get the full amount, has gone up double their money in the last few months. Uh, the stock market has been hitting all-time record highs. Real estate is super, super hot. Oil has gone from $40 to $80 in the last few months. So, yes, there's a lot of people out there who have made a lot of money uh, in a lot of different ways lately. For someone to win or this many people to win, someone needs to lose. Who's losing? Well, the people who sold or, or the people who went short. They were. It's kind of been kind of painful to go short oil the last. Oil is, I think, going up to $100 a barrel. It's about 80 now because the demand has come back as the pandemic has waned and the supply is not uh, – caught up you know where OPEC is keeping production where it is we're producing a lot less oil than we were before so oil has gone up dramatically and you're seeing that at the pump you're seeing that and, and you're going to see a lot more this winter with oil and gas heating bills natural gas even more so natural gas is up 150 percent so far this year and you're going to see that in your heating bills so you know the winners are those who have them the losers are those who have to pay for them where is the uh, how do I want to phrase this? Jordan Goodman, by the way, moneyanswers.com. I guess the best way to say it is where are you putting your money? What do you think maybe people are missing on right now that is hotter than, uh, it, it, than it seems on the surface? Well, I think a lot of people are missing out on Bitcoin and, and other cryptocurrencies. It's not only Bitcoin. It's Ethereum. Your, your favorite one, Lou, is Dogecoin. You know about that one, right? Oh, big D-O-K-E. Dogecoin guy. <laughs> it, it was actually started as literally as a joke. It was a joke. It's now about $25 per Dogecoin. Doge started at zero, basically. Um, and there's a lot of other so-called altcoins or alternative coins. Um, so I think people are missing out on that to some extent. Um, I actually have on my, at moneyanswers.com two resources that help you. There's one called Paxful, P-A-X-F-U-L, another one called eToro, which uh, is like an online community telling you everything about what's going on in Bitcoin all the time. Uh, Coinbase is another place you can do it. So I think a lot of people are kind of mystified, but they're missing out on this whole cryptocurrency uh, phenomenon, which is not going away. Do you know, like, uh, I mean, I, I'm sorry to put you on the spot with the kiosks, uh, just to get specific about that. Sure. Do you know how to use it? Because I saw a guy when Try, I, trying to trying use it? to use it, and he was there. Like, I, I kind of hung around just to see how long it was going to take him, and he was just baffled you know if they're you know user friendly well i mean you have to be somewhat familiar with it but supposedly i haven't actually used one myself i must say but they should have instructions it shouldn't be that hard to 
figure it out. You should go there next time and buy some Bitcoin for yourself. You know, buy ten dollars worth of it just for the experience. I'm gonna and then pay it. for pay for whatever you're buying at the Seven Eleven. You know that uh, whatever you had a gallon of beer or something. You know, with Bitcoin, <laughs> see how it goes. You know, it's interesting about this particular gas station. What's that? It's on the south end of Main Street, the yeah. 7-Eleven. It is already a disaster to pull into and out of. So now today, <laughs> it's just going to be even worse with people going over there to dump 15 bucks into uh-huh. the Bitcoin machine. Hey, Jordan. The future is now. The future has arrived. We appreciate you. I want everybody to go and check out Jordan's website because there's a resource center. You have Money Answers videos. He has his podcast available there. You can shop. You can ask him a question. He'll answer it. Moneyanswers.com. Moneyanswers.com. Jordan Goodman, we appreciate your time as yes, always. Thank you so much. Very good. Get, get your wife up to speed now, okay? Just give her a Bitcoin <laughs> wallet and she'll be happy. <laughs> All right. I'm going to work on that. Thank you. Thanks again. Thank you, both. All right. All bye-bye. Right.